What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. The tropics are about to get more active as we speak. We have this potential tropical wave right here that I've been watching. We have another one just to the east of it. Over here, I think this one is attached to it, I'm not 100% sure. And then we have another wave over here that will actually get some stuff taken care of with the Sahara dust down the road. So we're going to go ahead and briefly show you the water vapor imagery right here. As you can see, we're seeing more moistening of the atmosphere, at least in the main development region, as we're seeing more and more tropical waves starting to come off of the coast of Africa. And that's going to basically uh, start a pattern where we're going to start potentially seeing some more development, potentially more activity as we get into the second and third week of August. So this is definitely something we need to pay attention to. And this is definitely the time to start watching for any areas of interest tagged by the National Hurricane Center. There are none as of right now. However, we're going to go ahead and show you basically what's working for and against these kind of tropical systems we have right here. First, we're going to go ahead and show you the global sea temperatures right here. As you can see, we have some, th some stuff going on with them. We have a huge area of 31 plus degrees Celsius across much of the Gulf, parts of Cuba, the Bahamas, even into Haiti and the Dominican Republic over there. Huge area of 29 degrees Celsius plus, including a couple of new areas right here that are about, that are about southeast of New Jersey right here, which that in itself is pretty interesting because just to put that in consideration, we have basically water warm enough to fuel hurricanes all the way up until the mid-Atlantic, which is something you absolutely do not want to see going into this hurricane season right here. And if we go ahead and zoom in a bit towards the Gulf right here, we're starting to see more areas of 31 degrees Celsius, a lot of areas of 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 degree plus Fahrenheit temperatures. We have 32 plus degrees Celsius and off the coast of Louisiana, off the coast of Cuba right there. So definitely something we absolutely need to monitor as we go into hurricane season. And another thing we need to monitor is the ocean heat content right here. The ocean heat content or OHC for short has been absolutely insane. It's been out of this world. We're seeing a huge area now of 175 plus OHC across the the Caribbean Sea and parts of the Gulf of Mexico over here off the coast of Cuba, off the coast of Jamaica. So really anything that gets into that area of very, very, very large energy is like with the perfect wind shear is going to blow up right there. So that in itself... Already pretty alarming, especially considering back in 2020, we weren't even close to that huge expanse. We were seeing a bunch of areas of 150 plus, 125 plus, but this was the big 175 plus area of ocean heat content we have right here. So that should speak volumes as to how much more energy and how much more potential this hurricane season had compared to even the hyperactive hurricane season of 2020 right here. So that's what we have going on right here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the wind shear we have right here. The wind shear has been continuing to fluctuate in the Gulf today. There's very little to no wind shear. Parts of the Caribbean, there's very little to no wind shear. There is about 30 knots of wind shear on this, in the southwestern Caribbean over here. But overall, it's continued to weaken. We have some more wind shear in parts of the Atlantic Basin over here, parts of the main development region, as we start continuing to see that wave train move through. But other than that, it's continued that downward trend. If we go ahead and go to the eastern Atlantic, yeah, it's conti going to continue to fluctuate off and on, off and on for the rest of August. And it's going to arguably do that through most of hurricane season. However, right now, it's still on a downward trend. So this is definitely something we need to continue monitoring. There is a tropical wave. It's actually this one right here that has potential for development in previous runs. We've seen some ensembles potentially calling for it. But for now, we haven't really seen that much go on outside the main development region. It's been battling some dry air. Although yesterday, it did actually fuse with two other smaller tropical waves. And now it has a lot more protection against the dry air. So we'll have to see how that, how that plays out. But we'll go ahead and show you the European ensemble and as well as the, well, not the ensemble, but the shear forecast as well as the moisture component. And if we go ahead and show you that, here's what we're looking at about 24 hours uh, down the road. 24 hours down the road, you see a bit of an increase in the Atlantic, a bit of an increase across the Caribbean, southern Gulf of Mexico right there. 
So overall, continuing to fluctuate. Let's go ahead and go out to 72 hours. We continue to see that fluctuation. Down, now it's starting to decrease parts and across parts of the Gulf, across parts of the Caribbean, parts of the Atlantic over here. So this is definitely something that we need to monitor going into next week right here. This is August 10th right here, about five days out, continuing to fluctuate up and down, up and down. We'll go ahead and show you the moisture component, kind of cross-check this right here. The moisture component, interestingly enough, does start to show some the show the main development region rather moistening up and as you can see that one tropical wave we have over here in the eastern uh, in the east sorry off in Africa right here basically this uh, this as well as some other stuff that's going on is actually going to actually push the Sahara dust up to, at least some of it to Europe right here it's going to move through Africa push some of that dust to Europe right there and it's actually going to help less uh, lessen the amount of dust and help more develop tropical development potentially to happen so the last line of defense, which is that Sahara dust, which is all that dry air, is basically starting to collapse. It's the beginning of the end. I've been talking to my guys on Storms United about all this, and they are also agreeing that this is pretty much the beginning of the end. And it's actually happening much earlier than expected. We weren't expecting this whole process to start for another week or so, and now it's about going to start as early as this weekend. So everyone needs to continue to monitor that as time continues to go on. And basically for the shear for the last uh, for the next five days or so, the shear actually has a massive area of down a uh, uh, down a uh, down time right here. The shear drops considerably across much of the Atlantic Ocean on August 11th right here, and it continues into the uh, 13th of August. It does start to increase a little bit right after that. We'll have to continue to monitor that as time continues to go on. If we took a, take a look at the relative humidity, there is still a bit of dust that's going to be in the Atlantic, but it is going to start weakening down from here. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the ensemble runs. The one tropical wave from, from the European ensemble has been a bit interesting. It's been kind of been off and on, off and on, wondering if it's going to develop or not. Definitely something we need to continue to monitor. However, the uh, percent chance of this thing developing into something really major has dropped quite a bit. But we are paying attention down the road, uh, down to next week, where we see more and more of these tropical waves come off the coast of Africa into the main development region and start to potentially intensify into tropical systems as that Sahara dust starts to weaken and limit potential investments right there, potential development right there. It's going to stop doing that start, uh, pretty much after this week so far. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the GFS ensemble right here. The GFS ensemble we have pulled up right here. And the GFS is a bit more aggressive than the, Euro the European. For example, about five days out, they are calling for some tropical development of a wave. Basically, we can tr uh, trace it back to about here. It's this second tropical wave we have right here. That actually looks pretty a lot more impressive than the first, uh, mind you. And it actually has it cr cruising through the Caribbean potentially and potentially strengthening into a tropical storm or weak hurricane as time continues to go on. Considering development starts initiating about five days out, it's definitely something we need to pay attention to. As hurricane season continues to ramp up and we start seeing more activity, definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on. But then down the road, it starts to really uh, get its act together and start intensifying. Anything after day 10 days out is a bit untrustworthy. So for now, we're going to have to continue to monitor it and just get your hurricane preparedness plan ready and we'll continue to update you here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.